fragile pieces broken as competitors lift their eyes to the hills and blow away the peace of the English countryside. For an explanation, I sought out hill climb expert Simon, Simon. Taylor, for whom the bonnet of a car seems to act like an oxygen tent. You know, this looks like a car that might pass you in the motorway, but all around us here, there's an amazing diversity of cars. One of the things about hill climbing is that you can hill climb absolutely anything. This is my go to the office everyday work car, mm -hmm. which means it may not be beating some of the real heroes, but it's going to give me a lot of fun. Yeah. Hill climbing in general, and Chelsea Walsh in particular, has an extraordinary atmosphere. You almost feel it's something that could only happen in England, this uh, sort of country scene. And it makes a marvellous contrast from going to Formula One races, which I tend to do uh, on fortnightly weekends during the summer. It's very much more relaxed, it's laid back, it's friendly. It's the most relaxing way I can think of spending a weekend. Almost bring, like bringing a workshop into a pastoral setting. That's beavering right. away, making noise, totally oblivious to the, the charms of the countryside. Yes, under most of those trees you can find an oily sparking plug, and it may be an oily sparking plug which has been sitting there in a puddle since 1923. Shall we climb? <laughs> Why not? There are painful reminders, of course, that summer wishes never to return to us again. Heavy showers mean quick changes of car tread. This one is getting a short back and sides to transform it from slick to wet in a jiffy. And of course, this is absolutely essential in an event that is all about fine judgment. The intermittent rain will prove hazardous, although the impassive stare indicates that no one is going to beat a retreat. Simon Taylor again. This is his car to the office, as he puts it. He's made expensive adjustments to his engine, but he discovers his car has a samba in the rear axle. The conditions are winning. The Morris Minor, the once prim district nurse of a car, has been bodybuilding. Its three and a half litre twin turbocharged engine could be useful for sudden house calls. But in the second run, when the clouds clear, Nick Mann punches his way to the top in an impressive 38.11 seconds. What that car illustrates is that anything is possible in a hill climb. Innovation is especially welcome. And what could be more innovative than a grandstand reporter whose car has frequently been passed by mopeds on the highway, becoming competitor and chancing his arm? The one major piece of advice, Archie, is be smooth. Don't fling the car around. Try and take the hill as smoothly as possible. Your gear changes should be smooth. Don't go into the corners too quickly because then you'll come out more quickly. Smoothness is all. Mm -hmm. uh, you should find that the lower part of the hill like this one here. Smooth. That's pretty smooth. Now that the... Uh, you're going to do it in a turbocharged Ford Escort. You'll probably find that the lower corners on the hill, the kennel and crossing corners, you'll be able to take those without lifting off. You'll just be going up through the gearbox. By the time you come to the S's here, you'll be in third gear. You'll need to brake, take second. You'll hold second through the S's, back into third, and you may even be approaching top gear as you cross the finish line at the top. At the, at the moment, I know step one, where the ignition is. <laughs> No records broken today at Shelsley Walsh, but skids are plenty. W.E. Harker, number 33, dives up the bank right under the movie tone camera. Nobody's bones are broken, however, and the cameraman keeps on turning. Well, the route hasn't changed through the years and neither have crashes, although cameramen do try to play it safer now. This is Raymond Mays, the flashing star of the hill, who had the fastest time in the event on 21 occasions between 1923 and 1950. His technique and nerve is still admired. He dominated this uh, course for a generation, making his successful debut in a Bugatti, which climbed the course in 52.8 seconds, although in later years, he was to reach a time of 37.37. .37. Fraser Nash, a name which is a clear echo of the carefree 30s and upright British success, and still going strong. P. 
People who come here clearly ogle the classic cars almost lasciviously like this 1924 Sunbeam Tiger. And the beauty of this line, the Jaguar XK120. But above all, the priceless four-wheel drive Bugatti. A unique car. It caused a stir when it turned up in 1932 when Jean Bugatti tried to break the hill record. But then the suspension broke. Still does a lot of harm to eardrums. John Bolster was a remarkable competitor who learned about the value of crash helmets the hard way. His car was called Bloody Mary. Now both survived and there's a trophy now for ingenuity and engineering in the shape of a Bloody Mary Tantalus, which was presented this year to David Gould for his unique construction. Cars generally have got more and more technically difficult and more and more successful because of the uh, sort of advanced techniques used in them. So we thought we would take one, go one step ahead of them and build a sort of miniature Formula One car, if you like, mm -hmm. and well, honeycombs. Where does the technical ingenuity, which part of the car would you say is, for you, the biggest challenge of all? Well, it's basically it's the chassis. Um, the gearbox and the engine you just buy and put in it. Um, and they're the same gearbox and engine they're in just about every other car here at the moment. Um, it's making the chassis work better than the opposition. 19, she's quite fast, considering her starting point at 22. She's going as well as any of the last 10. No, the weather in Worcestershire didn't get that bad exactly. This is Davina Galisa skiing in the 1972 Olympics. She goes down one way in the winter, and another way up in the summer, a lady for all seasons. This is skiing in reverse. We're actually going as fast as we can up a hill, whereas with skiing, we're doing the identical thing, but down it, just down it. From the start, you go as fast as you can, and you keep your foot flat through the first two corners. There is no let up. From the time you, you change into third, you are absolutely flat. You must never, never let up. Never, never, never take your foot off. Bolt it to the floor. After a fine confident start, she strays off course and doesn't finish. The woman's record holder, Gillian Fortescue Thomas. She suffers the same fate as Davina and doesn't finish, but remains charmingly devoted to this pursuit. I just don't know, I'm competitive basically. I like, I've been racing horses and before this, so I think it's, it's the competition. And a car is such a, a wonderful thing to compete in because it's uh, unlike horse racing. You don't have the element of worrying about the feelings of the car. Uh, I enjoyed national hunt racing. You become fond of the horses. I mean, you, you have an affinity with a car, but it's not the same. Uh, you don't actually physically hurt it. Motorbikes and sidecars seem particularly vulnerable to the dicey conditions, but it certainly doesn't deter them. For instance, Formula One journalist Dennis Jenkinson, riding a 650 Trevia, insists the event relaxes him. One of the reasons I like hill climbs, particularly motorbike ones, is complete, relaxed freedom of everything. And you wander about, look at everything, you don't have to, well, you have to have a pass, but you don't have to show it. Whereas today in Formula One, it's so big and so organised that, you know, I need a pass to go through every gate there is. It's unbelievable. So, you mean... So, I come here for complete relaxation. You mean participating in this is almost a critical comment about Formula One itself? Yeah, I could say that. And now the ABC of the Hill taught by Simon Taylor. I find the whole thing a bit claustrophobic. But I take it that speed dispels all that. We'll soon find out. The passenger has to look, learn, and hang on. Meanwhile, the championship contender Chris Kramer, architect from Stroud, stresses the individuality of hill climbing. It's the start of the kart racing. That what really brought me into motorsport. I, I dislike racing with other people on the track because of their bad judgment and indiscretions. Oh, is that so? You mean you, you came to that decision, did you? I came to that decision. If I make a mistake hill climbing, there's one backside to kick and that's mine. But his backside in this car will cross the speed trap at over 100 miles an hour. 
He's aiming for the hill record of 26.08 seconds held by Alistair Douglas Osborne, who isn't competing in fact today. And up he comes to the home stretch. At his fastest. His time 27.99. And at the top, all the other drivers, almost reminiscent of air crews of old at Biggin Hill, having thrashed a hunt, relaxing before the next sortie. Kramer's championship rival, Martin Griffiths. Both of these men are lying equal in the British Hill Climb Championship. This is Griffiths' last run, and conditions are now ideal. But his mind's at rest. His first run has been faster than Kramer. And he does it. The fastest run of the day, flashing over the line 0.39 of a second faster than Kramer. Griffith's love for the event is not merely based on winning. I think just the history, all the, uh, before the Second World War, which is before I was born, I mean, every famous driver was here. And although this is now a small part of motorsport, um, it's just remembering the, the names and um, appreciating it. It may be small, but I get the quite clear impression that everybody is totally dedicated to this, you know, the great affection for it. Yes, definitely. And I think the best part of the sport is that everybody will help. Uh, anybody else, for instance, if you break a gear, which we did uh, yesterday, I mean, you are, and you hadn't got a replacement gear, we, somebody would lend it to us. We offered to lend somebody a, a clutch last night. And uh, uh, for instance, uh, somebody couldn't make the top 10 second run a few minutes ago. Well, of course, we uh, went over to see if there was a battery or if we could help. That's the best part of it. We want to win, but we want people there to beat. And yet, as he takes over, he knows another hill beckons, and the race to the clouds has another three rounds to go. The margins might even be smaller. And now, the ultimate, the grandstand entry. Sign language that seems to say, why don't you think again? But now, off to where eagles dare. sharp one to the left, really sharp, almost over to the side, and now we go up steeply this time, into third gear, turning around to the left, this is where you can pick up time, real straight drive up the hill now, keeping in third gear, turning left, and now to the most difficult bend of all, this is where they suddenly come unstuck, lose vital seconds, which I'm trying not to do, right round there, almost a cut out because it over revved, sharp right, And then the finish straight ahead. Of course, I really shouldn't have tried fifth gear on the last bend. It doesn't break records. But after all, I did say they liked innovation. That's it. All right, getting slowly better. Yeah. Phew. Well, actually, a very creditable first effort. Well, I don't know about that. It was, uh, oh, I'll tell you what, it was a bit scary. Well, this is a little bit of the start, you know? An old motor racing tradition. By Joe. I thought this was a Grand Prix tradition. Well, we thought we could bend the rules a bit for you. Yes, well, apart from they sprayed about, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, I really do believe we ought to drink this just for a change. That's a good idea. Yes. That it is. Six. <laughs> well, look at them all coming. Look at them all running in like vultures, you know? They didn't no, no, tell me hill you. climbers were like that, exactly. Well, here's to... Um, Cheers, Archie. ...to hills and to Hosper. That's a good one.